there is an association of exposure and disease. Now we have to go to the next step and say, is the association causal? And this was the second question I showed you in the earlier part of the presentation. How do we move from association to causation? This is a particularly challenging step. Decades ago, when the possible link of cigarette smoking and lung cancer became apparent, the Surgeon General convened an expert group to set guidelines or criteria for how we would move to causal inferences from evidence of causation. Some of these are seen on this slide. First, is there a temporal relationship between the exposure and the disease? What does this mean? If we believe that a certain exposure causes a disease, then the exposure should have occurred prior to the development of the disease. If the exposure occurred after the disease, clearly it's not consistent with a causal inference. Next is the strength of the association, also called the relative risk, which I just discussed. Third is the dose-response relationship. The dose-response relationship says that if an exposure is related to the development of disease, the greater your exposure, the greater your risk of disease should be. The association should also be consistent in different studies. And if we remove the exposure, we would expect that the risk of disease would go down. The relationship that we're suggesting of causation between exposure and disease should be biologically plausible, and we should rule out alternative explanations. And it has also been suggested that the association be specific for a certain exposure and a disease. Let me show you two examples. And particularly the issue of temporal relationship is what I would like to focus on for a moment. This is a well-known saying, post hoc ergo propter hoc. After this, therefore because of this. This is a human tendency to interpret the cause of any event as being the event that preceded it. That because something follows something else, we generally assume that it must be due to that. Clearly that is not so. As I said a moment ago, we need to have a temporal relationship we need to know that the putative cause, the exposure, occurred before the disease developed, but it does not mean that every time something follows something else, that it is causally related. This slide shows the dose-response relationship of lung cancer and cigarette smoking. As I mentioned to you a few moments ago, the greater the exposure, the greater the risk. And this shows that with more cigarettes smoked, the greater the risk of dying as reflected in the mortality rate. So this is an example of a dose-response relationship which provides extremely strong support, extremely strong support for a causal inference. Let's stop and ask the question, what are the legal and policy implications of finding a strong association even if causation cannot be determined by using these criteria or guidelines. That is, we show a strong association, the relative risk is high, but when we go to that list of guidelines, we're not able to document them. Often we just don't have the data. The appropriate studies haven't been carried out. This represents a major problem for the courts in interpreting epidemiologic evidence. We speak of factors being risk factors rather than causal factors, only because the evidence is not strong enough for us to come to a conclusion regarding causation. But it is an unresolved issue and poses serious problems for people faced with interpreting the legal implications of strong association and yet not having the 